can't tell yet. <laughs> it certainly will be able to in a minute, but it is absolutely blowing a hooli. And anyone who's ever tried to do any filming knows that that is absolutely rubbish if you are trying to film a video, because not only might that tripod suddenly go over the hedge, but you know, the mic might be all over the place. So I do hope you're going to be able to hear me. If it's a bit rubbish at the minute, it's because, <laughs> because I'm doing that. So I'm going to hold it there for a second. But what I want to do today, there you go, the sun's out. You'd think it was nice and warm, wouldn't you? It's not, it's freezing. Look what's going on here. Um, what I want to show you today is how I prune my apple trees. And I want to assure you that it is not as scary as you might think. I used to be absolutely terrified come pruning time but if you stick to a couple of basic principles you'll get through it so let me start with what they are okay are you ready for my two principles first one find out what time of year your particular tree needs pruning okay as i've said they're not just all one time of year it's not just all in the winter so for example I know that my apple trees and my pear trees need pruning in the winter when they are dormant. Principle number two, don't cut off anything that you shouldn't. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's it. That's basically it. Two main principles. But we'll go out there and I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. We've got the first principle down. It's winter. They're dormant. They're ready to be pruned. Let's look at the set second principle now. Okay, this is a reasonably young apple tree. We put these in when we first moved in. It was already a year old, so it must be about five years old now. And I've been pruning it for shape every single year. But if we look at it today, let's just see what we've got. We have got some shoots coming out of the side here. They need to go. And the other things we are looking for are the three Ds. So we are looking for dead, diseased, damaged branches. And I can tell you now, this is a really, really healthy tree. So you might think, hey Jane, there's nothing at all needs taking off. But once you've checked for those, let's just have a little look at that. No, that looks fine. Once you've checked for those, what you want to do is check and see if any of your branches are crossing. Because if they are, what happens as they continue to grow, is they will start to rub against each other. So let's find an example of that. Okay, can you see here? This branch is coming out, this branch is coming out that way, and as they get bigger and stronger, they are going to rub against each other. So what I will probably do in this case, I'm probably gonna take that one right back to a nice bud there, and then that'll allow it to spread this way. But yeah, we don't want all this growth here. Same with this branch here. That's growing up. It's not doing any good to anybody. This is the bigger, healthier branch. This one's quite established. I do not want that to grow and those two to meet. Because what happens when they do start rubbing against each other, they will wear away the other bark. And uh, that, of course, is going to be an entrance for disease to get in. So you want to make sure that they've all got plenty of space around them. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of any of the 3Ds and any crossing branches, and then we'll come back and we'll have a little look at the shape. Of course, it's a given that all your tools are nice and clean and you have sharpened that cutting edge. woman over there pruning my apple tree and <laughs> just say a big thank you to the patrons who have come over to the Patreon channel already. Every penny that they pledge has already been put towards our shed extension by way of being able to get hold of some really good reclaimed wood. So if you don't know already, we're looking to extend this shed um, over the next few months or two just 
just to make it a much much nicer place and to be honest anything's an improvement so do check out the Patri patreon channel i'll get it right one day i'll leave the link somewhere and i'll leave it at the end of the video and for that me and sybil say a huge thank you don't we Okay, the next thing I want to be looking at is the actual shape, because one of the main reasons that we prune, one, we prune to get rid of old wood, so that, um, to reinvigorate the tree to make new growth. But we also want to keep this, <laughs> you can't see me because there's a tree in the way, this central area, where's my mic? This central area, we want to try and keep it as clear as possible. I mean, obviously you're gonna get branches going through, but you think if each one of these buds grew into a branch that is going to make the central area of the tree really really congested and we all know that if a plant of any type does not get airflow through it's a haven for disease so we're going to try and trim back the middle make sure as we're going around we'll see if there's any more crossing branches i'm going to take off the tips of these very tall branches so maybe about six to eight inches off each branch because i don't want it growing much taller than it actually is anyway so crossing branches bring down the height and i'm going to open up the center wish me luck i also don't want if i should let's come round. let's come round. I also don't really want any of these branches going down because all they're going to do is get thicker, get heavier, and the weight of those is actually going to pull down the whole tree. So I will take those back, not all the way, but certainly to within a couple of buds. So that'll help with the shape and the airflow. Of course, it is always easy to go get a little bit snap happy. <laughs> so just be careful you don't get carried away. Keep standing back, having a good look, and still help you to see what you've missed and what you need to stop chopping away at. Wherever you cut it back to, that bud is going to grow into a branch. So it's going to grow that way. Oh, I don't like that. I'm going to cut it to an outward pointing bud so that that now should send shoots out over here okay I'm going to step back and see if there's anything more to do and if you see any more crossover that looks like it could do you see you get braver as you go on which is a bit scary um, if you see anything else as the season goes on you know that you've got your basic structure there you can just snip it off where are you <laughs> he's disappearing now I've stood on a bamboo cane okay all you need to know now is what you have learned on those small trees you then apply to the bigger tree this is our central russet i gave this a really really good prune when we first moved in quite a few people were alarmed actually i took off this main main branch at the bottom there was one underneath there was one here in fact there was one had absolutely snapped under the weight of the apple and what was happening was every time they fruited the apples were literally touching the ground so many people told me off for doing that but actually it's been a really good thing and it's brought all the life up to here but yes this is quite congested now I had a light prune last year I try not to give it a really heavy prune every year just in case um, but again the, exactly the same principles as it was it's like doing maths you start off by doing one and one and then you might start doing you know 10 and 10 and then <laughs> you know now we're doing a thousand times a thousand and it's just a case of moving your knowledge up a little notch so exactly the same it might look daunting but it's the same principle so i'm going to get on with this and i hope this has sort of shown you that through what I've learned over the last few years, there is absolutely nothing to be scared about. And to be honest, once you get into it, it's actually a really enjoyable thing to do. So thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.